Welcome back. A vector space model represents documents as vectors, as vectors of vocabulary indices. Then these vectors can be represented in a vector space. Suppose that vectors A and B represent two different documents. How this is done is by first identifying a vocabulary in a corpus and then sorting that vocabulary. Now each element in the vector represents one of these words in the vocabulary and the value represents the count. For example, imagine we have a vector A with these values and a vector B with these values. This means that the first vocabulary word occurred two times in vector A and one time in vector B. The second vocabulary word occurred once in vector A and not at all in vector B. An alternative to creating counts is to use binary vectors of ones and zeros indicating the presence or absence of a term in a document. Once these vectors are created, we can compute the cosine of the angle between them to measure the similarity of the documents. The cosine function ranges from negative 1 to positive 1, but in our vector space model, since all of our values will be positive numbers, the cosine will actually range from 0 to 1. Values close to 0 will indicate little similarity between the documents, and values closer to 1 indicate a high similarity. In other words, the larger the angle, the less similar, and the smaller the cosine. Conversely, the smaller the angle, the more similar the documents are, and the larger the cosine of the angle. Let's look at how we could vectorize documents. Let's say that document A is her favorite hobbies are reading, walking, and learning new things. And document B is his favorite hobbies are reading, discussing politics, and walking the dog. So far, there are only two documents in our corpus. First, let's represent A and B as just a list of words. And from there, we can get our vocabulary, which we've put in alphabetical order. Once we have a vocabulary, we can create the vectors. For example, A doesn't have discuss or dog. It does have favorite, hobby, knit, learn, no politics, read, thing, and walk. Similarly for B, we have discuss, dog, favorite, hobby, no knit, no learn, politics, read, no thing, but walk. These look like binary vectors since our corpus is so small, but really we did use counts. Here's A and B again, and now we're going to compute the cosine similarity. This is computed as the dot product of the two vectors normalized by the vector norms. So if we do a dot product here, multiplying each element by the corresponding element, we're going to have a lot of zeros. Here's a 1, another 1, uh, the third one, and the fourth one. So our dot product here is 4. The norm of A is going to be the square of each term added together. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we take the square root of 7, which is 265. B also happened to have the same norm. So when we calculate this out, we get a cosine similarity measure of 0.57. So the two vectors are slightly more alike than they are not alike. They're somewhat similar. And this brings up a good question. What is a reasonable cutoff point for deciding that two documents are similar? That will actually depend on the corpus and the task. One approach would be to randomly sample documents and compute cosine similarity, and then finding an average. Anything above that average would be considered fairly similar. Another approach could be to select some threshold like 0.75.
and that optimal threshold will depend on the application. Should it err towards finding too many or too few similar documents? This notebook in the GitHub shows how to build a vector space model from scratch. I'm going to do some pre-processing, so I've got a lot of imports here. And I'm going to use the same four documents that we looked at in previous videos of plain text documents representing part of a chapter of a college level textbook on anatomy, business law, economics, and geography. I'm dividing each of those documents into two smaller documents. So I'm going to end up with eight documents. I'm going to process each document by limitizing the words in a doc if it's not a stop word and if it is alpha. And so what I'll end up here is a list of docs, eight documents. And here I'm building the vocabulary for my corpus. I start off with an empty set, then for each of the eight documents, I get a set of its words and join that with the set. Another way I could have done this is just to merge all the lists and then do a set. Then I take my vocabulary and sort it alphabetically. We can see that it has 3601 words and I printed out the first five here. You can see that it is sorted. Now I want to create my vectors and I'll create a list of vectors. So I'm going to go through each of the eight documents and each position in the vector will be the count of that vocabulary word. Here I've printed out the first ten elements of vector number one. I'm going to use NumPy to help me with the math. I made a function for cosine similarity. Given two vectors, it will take the dot product divided by multiplying the norm of each of those. And now that I have my cosine similarity, I can just iterate over all of the vectors and compute the cosine similarity with the first vector. So the first vector with itself has a cosine similarity of 1. And with the other half of the original document it came from, it has a very high cosine similarity, and the others are very low. So this tells us that cosine similarity is able to find similarity between documents. So now that we've done that from scratch so that we really understand what cosine similarity has done, we can take advantage of built-in functions. For example, sklearn has a tfidf vectorizer. So instead of using counts like we did above, it'll use tfidf. This line is just putting my docs back into plain text so that I can fit the vectorizer to that document. And we see that we have eight documents and this is our vocabulary. The TFIDF will have its own internal stop words. It eliminated a few more words than, than our NLTK stop word list. And we also can take advantage of sklearn's cosine similarity metric. And what we see here is we get very similar results. The first document cosine similarity with itself is 1, and with its second half is 0.7, very similar. And we get very low cosine similarity for the other documents. So we've learned the basics here of a very interesting NLP technique, the vector space model. What can we do with it? It can be used for document retrieval. For example, A might be a query, a search query, and B might be docs. And so we could search through a corpus of docs to see which documents are more similar to our search query. Cosine similarity can be used for clustering similar documents. It's also been used for plagiarism detection. An important aspect of the cosine similarity formula is this denominator which normalizes the documents. That's important because it enables us to compare short documents to long documents fairly. And this leads me to today's quote. 
from the writing expert Diana Bohr. Writing long sentences is like adding water to tea. The more words, the weaker the message. Mm-hmm.